journey begins from Addis Ababa, the seat of African Union and many international institutions. I am making my way south of the capital to join one of the most spectacular tourist destinations in Ethiopia, the Sinclair Swine Sartibist Sanctuary. I continued my drive enjoying the beautiful traditional huts of Western Sea people of Oromia. In the area, countryside life is partially visible. Rural women are heading to the marketplace where they are possibly to walk 5 to 10 kilometers on foot. Shortly after a few drives, my eyes were stuck on the beautiful green plains. It is a single lace wine sartibist sanctuary which was established in 1972 to protect hartebeast and other wildlife in the surrounding area. Its natural vegetation consists of acacia and short savanna grass. Sinclair Swine Sartibis Sanctuary is very small as compared to other wildlife protection in the country. However, this tiny reserved area displays a substantial number of wildlife and birds. Uh, Sinclair Swine Sartibis Sanctuary is uh, found uh, 300 km from Addis Ababa and 50 km from Shashamani. Uh, it has uh, total areas. 57 square kilometer and also the number of heart are uh, from 700 to 800 uh, and also there are uh, uh, mammals and birds uh, mammals about 37 and the birds about 191 Sinclair Swine Sartibis Sanctuary is home to various endemic and endangered wildlife among them Swine Sartibis Wood talk and Orbi are some to mention. In this sanctuary, some animal species live together with astonishing natural tradition. For instance, I have witnessed swine sartibis, wood talk and Orbi grazing together. Really an amazing coexistence. Foreign tourists can easily enjoy such animal species and beautiful scenery in Sinclair Swine Sartibis Sanctuary. My name is Dorsey Berger and I'm from the United States of America. How do you find Sinclair Hartebeest Sanctuary? The Sinclair Swain Hartebeest Sanctuary is a, a beautiful place. I live here, I've lived here for about six months and uh, I'm a Peace Corps volunteer. I will live here for two years. It's a beautiful place for the Hartebeest and other wildlife. So, what is the new experience you have in this sanctuary? Well, everything here is new. It's a, it's a small sanctuary, but there is a lot of wildlife here. I have made good friends with the staff from the Ethiopian Wildlife Conservation Authority and of course the, the local villagers as well. The sanctuary is surrounded by villages and it's a new experience to work in a conservation area, protected area, and work with the uh, local people as well. If the time is perfect, one can see large herds of swine sartibist in Sinclair Sanctuary. Of course, the number of swine sartibis contained within a single herd varies depending on the specific area they are living. These herds of hartebis comprise of other smaller groups, mostly group of young males, females and their young. Spotted hyena and jackal are the major predators of swine sartibis. When a predator approaches the herd, one or more hartebis give an alarm of sneezing and they run away together. Male and female swine sart beast have similar appearances, although the male is slightly bigger. Both male and female have horns, long faces, dark brown or yellow brown color, and a small hump between the shoulders. The shape of their horn varies from one another. Some have S shape and others have U shape horn. But in general, their horns are fully expanded. Mostly, swine start to be living grassland and open forest. They spend the morning and late afternoon eating. There is no enough drinking water for the heart beast in Sinclair, but they appear to be in excellent condition. Sinclair Swine Heart Beast Sanctuary has its own unique feature. It is very famous for its swine heart beast. Savanna grass supports them as a source of food. According to sources, there are about 700 to 800 swine hartebeest 
in this sanctuary. When Singile Sanctuary was established in 1974, the number of swine's heart beasts was around 400. These numbers approximately reached around 3,000 until the fall of Dark Regime in 1991. Following the instability of regime change, the number of swine's heart beasts was drastically shrunk. The situation worried all Ethiopians and the action to restore the number continued. Owing to the coordinated effort of local people, West Arsi Zone Culture and Tourism Office and the Ethiopian Wildlife Conservation Authority, the number of swine's heart beasts in Singale is now better, if not good. Efforts are underway to save the lives of these invaluable animal species at different levels. We are uh, strengthening uh, our protection and conservation of the area. There are five outposts. And in, in the outposts there are uh, scouts who protect the area and illegal activities. So we, most of the time, we give them awareness. Beyond that, if it is, uh, if they do not, if they perform illegal activities again and again, we use the legal enforcement. The first measure is uh, uh, by, which we take by states uh, government. Uh, that measure are uh, establishing uh, policy. The first measure is establishing policy to save these animals. And uh, the other measure which we do is uh, uh, with a local and uh, local uh, government and uh, people which live around this garden. We. Uh, uh, capacitate their uh, awareness uh, on uh, the importance of these uh, animals. According to sources, the Singular heart beast represents the best known population of swine's heart beast. They are said to be the biggest and the healthiest in terms of apparent reproductive sexes. Female swine's heart beast will leave its herd and find an isolated area surrounded by long grass when they are about to give birth. Its pregnancy lasts for seven to eight months and mostly give birth to a single calf. The calf lies quietly in its hiding place while its mother feeds. The mother and the calf join the herd a few weeks later when the calf is able to walk and run. Calves are weaned at the age of four months and young males stay with their mothers for two to three years. Females stay by their mother's side for life. Young males of swine's heart beast join a bachelor's group when their horns are fully expanded at the age of four. At this time in point, Swine's heart beast is endemic to Ethiopia. They are surviving in three isolated populations. But a long time ago, this endemic mammal used to live in Djibouti and Somalia. Hunting, urban development, and competition with domestic herd of cattle have extended them. They do not migrate, but will move to other locations if conditions become severe, as in the case of drought. Slender antelope of medium small size and sandy body color is known as orbi, or Sinkele as local people call it. Sinkele Swine Sartivist Sanctuary is named after this beautiful animal. They prefer flats or gentle slopes and are commonest on open lawns of grass. The main food of orbi is different types of fresh green grass, shrubs and other tree species. Orbis are independent in their movements, but by becoming the object of continuous attention from a single, each adult determines 
the area within which he is intolerant of other. This area becomes a shared territory in which each partner repels other for the same sex. Their pairing lasts for many years. Seasons, predators and reproduction all influence activity. Thus, orbits rest longer on hot afternoons and may lie up during heavy rain. In exposed areas, they prefer to graze at night, notably during full moons and dry seasons. In Sinclair, the mating peak for Orbis is April and their pregnancy lasts for seven months. The young is adept at concealment for three to four days. Thereafter, it begins to follow the mother, but it still seeks shelter from time to time. Its growth is very rapid. This is another one. The warthogs. They strip growing grass of their seed heads. They occasionally eat fallen fruits and animal food. There are several social levels in warthog. Mother and their offspring maintain the most enduring bonds. Thus, a new family unit joins others that are probably also close relatives. Wherever there are marked seasonal climatic changes, Warthog are seasonal breeders, rutting at the dry season and farrowing near the beginning of the rains. So separate from their families to farrow in a hole where the young remain for six to seven weeks except for brief expeditions. Around Sinclair Swansart Beast Sanctuary, there is no lodge, hotel, or any other cafeteria services that make tourists stay for longer time. The tourists are forced to go to nearby towns such as Shashamani or Hawasa to get such services. At St. Kelly, it's primarily a day-use area. So, people that come in, tourists from other areas, they come in their cars usually because there's no public transport here, and then they leave. We're building a visitor center, and at that visitor center, hopefully we'll have uh, facilities for day use. The only people that stay overnight are people that bring their own camping uh, gear and camp out in the park. For uh, hotels, people must go to the nearby towns, Ajay or Shashamani or Awasa. Despite the shortage of tourist service giving center around Sinkile, tourist flow to the sanctuary is increasing from time to time. According to sources, the majority of people visiting the sanctuary are foreign tourists. Most of them are from France, Germany, Italy, Spain and others. The foreign currency gained from these tourists is also supporting the country's economy. The tourist flow is increasing from time to time. Uh, last year it was the number of visitors was about uh, uh, 935 and also the income was uh, about uh, uh, 44,000. Now it's increasing. Only within nine months, the number of visitors are uh, 990. It's about 1,000, and the income is about 60,000. So it supports uh, the country econ. Sinclair Swine's Heart to be Sanctuary is really beautiful. Its scenery, plains land, short green savanna, wild and bird life and even its sky are unforgettable memories once visited. To observe all this compilation of nature all in all, you have to go one specific place. There are three viewpoints in Sinkele Sanctuary, Borana, Lalima and Tesisa. From these viewpoints, you can see Lake Hawasa. In this area, there are around 20 mammals, leopard, cheetah, bushbuck and much more. I came across one American man inside the sanctuary. His name is Dorsey Berger. Going back to his country, Dorsey has something to tell to his family, friends and others about the beauty of St. Elizabeth Sartre Sanctuary. Thanks to the internet I can have pretty fast communication with them and they know and some of them in America they want to come and visit me here and see the the sanctuary here and other protected areas in Ethiopia. Uh, of course, when I go back to America, I will tell 
all my friends and, and family members that I haven't already told about, about St. Kelly, about the Heart of Beast, about the challenges of, of living and working in protected areas and the, the beauty of the country and the biodiversity. Of course, for him, the facility available inside parks in a protected area in Ethiopia and the United States of America are quite different. But he said, Ethiopia has many unique and unforgettable wild and bird life. It's a little bit difficult to compare because the situation in Ethiopia is so different from the situation in the United States of America. In the U.S., the, the parks are protected. They have a lot of money, like you say, a lot of resources. And uh, there, the challenges there are not the same challenges that we have in Ethiopian parks where there are many people and many people like to use the resources in the parks in Ethiopia, including Senkele. Uh, local communities like to graze their cattle in St. Kelly, and it's a challenge because uh, the, san the sanctuary itself here is very small. Whereas the parks in America, they're very large and have a large staff and good infrastructure. The RC Oromos, who inhabit around St. Kelly's Wine Sartabi Sanctuary, are well aware of the importance of these precious wine lives. There is strong cultural administrative and political tradition of Gada system helps them very much to protect the endemic and endangered wildlife in the surrounding area. The, the people are aware, especially on hunting. This animal con considered as their own tribe. So no one kills swine harvest. If someone kills harvest, uh, the elders charge uh, the illegal person hundred cattle mm. or considered as killing his own tribe. So they, are, they have awareness about illegal activities. Well-disciplined humanity is very essential in preserving and protecting these natural gifts. Many awareness raising efforts are continued among the local community in order to preserve these natural treasures. Despite the efforts, the local people have settled inside the reserved area for a known period. While we were inside the sanctuary for work, I have witnessed large number of domestic animals grazing inside the sanctuary. There are so many challenges which are faced. Among these challenges, the interests of so many people are interface. For that purpose, these animals are decreased from year to year. And they become around 1984, uh, only 50 uh, hertz are uh, uh, counted. Now, a day, um, the federal uh, government and uh, uh, local government are give attention to uh, save uh, this endemic animals. It's a big challenge for the Ethiopian Wildlife Conservation Authority and for Ethiopia in general. I think what they should do is try to protect these areas from illegal activity.